Hello, welcome back. In the last episode, I showed you how to use the background node. And in this episode, we are going to use the mask nodes to create basic shapes. So let's get started and drag in a few of those mask nodes. There's this rectangle node, the ellipse node, the polygon node, and the spline node. To make this mask visible, we need another background node. And I will change the color to red. And let's get a merge node and connect a background node to our merge node. Now our whole background is red and if we connect our mask node to this red background, it will only show in the mask. So we have a rectangle and in the inspector we can change the width and the height and we can change the angle. That's pretty simple. Then on top here, there's this level slider, which is an opacity slider. If we drag it all the way down, the background isn't visible. Then there's the soft edge slider, which creates a feathered out look at the edges. And the next slider is the border width slider. Right now it just looks like we are increasing the size of our rectangle. But if we uncheck the solid check box, you can see we created a border and in the middle of the rectangle there is no infill. And we can also decrease the border or increase it. Then there is another quite interesting checkbox next to the solid checkbox, which is the invert checkbox. And it just inverts the mask. Under the invert checkbox, there are border styles. So let's put it back to our default. And let's do something like this. You can see we have sharp corners. Then we have round corners. And then we have these edges. Let's stay with our sharp corners and make it solid again. Now you have seen these round corners on the border style, but if we move down here, there's this corner radius slider. And this does the same thing. You can just control it more than this button. You can do it just a little bit or all the way. Okay, let's have a look at the ellipse mask. Let's connect it to the background. It's quite similar to our rectangle mask. We have this level slider, we have the soft edge slider, we have a border slider, but we don't have these corner options because it's a circle or an ellipse. Um, you can change the width and the height and you can change the angle too. The next mask is the polygon. This is super interesting because you can draw your own shapes. If you have your mouse over the view, you see this, there's a cross cursor and if you click, you create a point. And now if you click around in the window, you will create a shape. And right now I only have created sharp edges, but if I want to have a round edge, I will have to click and hold down. And then I can drag this handle to create a rounded shape. Let's do it again. And if you are finished, you can close your shape by clicking on the first polygon again. After closing it, you can still click and hold on these points and move them around. You can also change these handles. And if you want to change the edge from a sharp edge to a round edge, so let's select maybe these four edges, you can go up here and click this round icon, the smooth icon. And if you want to add another point, 
you can just click on the edge and drag it somewhere. So let's have a look in the inspector. We have the same sliders as with our nodes before. And we have a size slider and we can rotate it. The only new thing in this tab is if we take for example this corner and drag it over here, you can see it changes the filling. If it overlaps something we already have filled, it removes the filling. And if it overlaps something we don't have already filled, it doesn't overlap something. We can change this behavior. So if we drag this over here and we change the fill method to non-zero winding, it will fill even if it's overlapped. Before I show you a super practical tip, let's have a look at the last mask node, the spline. So connect it up to our background and the spline is similar to the polygon, but it doesn't need to be closed. So we can just start drawing a shape here and it's a line and maybe move this up here. You can see it is already quite smooth and we have the same sliders, but we need to change the border width to make it visible because if the border width is zero and we click on the media out, the spline isn't visible. And if we increase the border width, it will be visible. So let's make it quite small. And the other sliders are the same again, but we have two new sliders. So there's this position slider and this length slider. And now I will show you how to animate them because the position slider is the back end and the length slider is the front end. So let's go to frame zero and place a keyframe on both values which are zero. Then let's go to frame 25, increase the length slider and then maybe to frame 35 and increase the position slider all the way. And if you watch back our animation now, there's this funny line flying through our screen. And these are the mask nodes. And before you click off the video, let me show you something real quick. Um, let's reconnect our rectangle node to our background node. Now let's get another one of these nodes and hook it up to the rectangle node. And as you can see, these already merged. So now we have the rectangle and the ellipse. And now let's change the height and the angle. And I will increase the border. No, not the border width, but the soft edge. And now I will change something on the rectangle node because there is now this paint mode. Now it's selected as merge, but we can do something like invert. Now this mode already changed how our entire image looks. And if we add our spline now, we can make it go through our image too. And on the spline. And now with only these few nodes, we already have accomplished this quite complex composition with a little animation. If you haven't watched the first part of this complete fusion course, go ahead and watch it. Otherwise, I will see you in the next one.